Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Marriage. But before we get into that, give me the book of Job, the 31st chapter, the third verse. Before we get into that, I want to remind you, brothers and your sisters, in these last days, that um, there is a God. That's for right. those of you that sometimes throughout the week, you know, throughout the week we're in the spirit. Well, on the Sabbath we're in the spirit. On Sundays when we have our get-togethers, Children's Day, things like that, we you in the spirit. Because you're amongst the body. You're amongst other believers, brothers and sisters. But it's when you go home and you by yourself throughout the week that you be tried. Wednesday, Thursday, Tuesday, that's when you try. That's when the trials really come because guess what? You're away from the body. Right? So now the old you wants to constantly pop up. Family members contacting you throughout the week. All kind of things you play with, right? So I want to remind you there is a God. And he is watching. Alright? Uh, Job 31 verse 3. This is the book of Job chapter 31 and verse 3. Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? You ever seen, like, uh, we were talking about, um, there's a TV show back in the day called <clears throat> A Thousand Ways to Die. Is that the name of it? Yeah, right. It's called A Thousand Ways to Die. You see some crazy deaths on there, right? Just some crazy stuff. You just like, I don't know, dude running, he committed adultery, he running out the window, he dive out the window, and then he fall on a, you know, something and go right through his neck or something. Something crazy, just a horrific death. You're like, wow. Why would God allow somebody to die like that? That's a cruel way for you to die. Read it again. Is not destruction to the wicked and a strange punishment to the workers of iniquity? So what we what we consider a strange punishment or something that's that's wicked, you're like, wow, how can somebody die like that? God said, that's what he does. The Lord is the author of that thing. You see what I'm saying? That's the God we serve. I know in Christianity we've been taught different, but we got to be reconciled back to the God, our Father, and understand who he is. And how he deal. He don't deal like Cedric Borgia deal in the Christian church. You understand that? You know what's crazy? In the Christian church, they always say, you know, they had that white image of Christ. He all love and all know him. But the same person that was teaching you this was beating your back in every every day. Knocking your teeth out and forcing you to, to eat the food. You know what I'm saying? Y'all seen, you know seen that on, uh, what movie was that? Uh, uh, Slave. Slave. There's a couple other movies. Uh, was Birth, of Birth of a Nation. Knock, yeah, he knocked the man teeth out to force him to eat because he was going to starve himself so he couldn't work. Right? So the same man taught you that, told you that Jesus loved everybody. Jesus loved the little children. All the children of the world. Except you niggas. He don't like, he don't love y'all. You see what I'm saying? So we got to get that God out of our mind. That's not our God. Okay? Uh, read verse 4. Verse 4. Do it not he see my ways and count all my steps? You know, on these on these Apple watches or they got Samsung. I think Samsung got a little bit got a little watch. I think Android got a little watch or something. <laughs> but on these watches, if you're working out, you can like count your steps, right? And then it calculate how many steps you took that day or within that session, right? Well God been counting your steps since the first step you took when you was a little baby. At a year old, eight months old, nine months old, whatever, which, whichever one, whichever time y'all started walking, right? So God said He can count those steps. He's been counting every step since the day you was born. So knowing that somebody has, that a, a God or a being has an almighty power like that, we have to be mindful of how we walking, how we moving when we not amongst the body. Everybody in the spirit here, right? That's when correct. we leave the congregation, that's when the demons try to come back on us. The old us tries to come back out and manifest itself. Correct? Yes, okay, read verse four again, please. Do not you see my ways and count all my steps? Go ahead. If I have walked with vanity, or if my foot have hasted to deceit. Read it again, right there, verse 5. If I have walked with vanity. That means lies, deceit, read. Or if my foot has hasted to deceit. Meaning, I'm in the congregation, and I'm just, hey, everything's all right. Shalom, brother, you right? You in the spirit? Yeah, I'm in the spirit. I'm so high, quite blessed. Since you in the spirit, I'm all right. I'm in the spirit. Everything's going well. 
But meanwhile, deep down inside, they, they, everything ain't well. When you leave here, you got all kinds of things that you're dealing with and you, you're afraid to confess. A lot of y'all are afraid to confess because you think you're going to be judged in the sense of we're going to come down on you. How many of you, just I asked the brother, I won't ask the sister. How many of you have we judged you but not given you a solution? Nobody can raise their hand. Y'all see that, sisters? No brother have we ever got on about something but have not built them back up. Have you ever, I'm about to say it like this. I mean, have we ever gotten on anybody in the congregation and then not built them back up? Has that ever happened? Anybody can raise their hand and say that? So, that, that's, that's what we're trying to show our brothers and our sisters. When you get corrected, it's not to kill you, it's not to destroy you. It's only to, to, to break you down on that particular subject and then build you back up. We can't be judges of God and be tearing brothers and sisters down and leave them down. God didn't do that to us. You see what I'm saying? He was merciful for us. He could have broke us down and kept us down. A lot of us could have been dead. Some of the stuff we used to do, we could be dead right now. So we're not going to deal with y'all like that. We will rebuke you if you're wrong. We will break out the scriptures to show you that you're wrong. But it's all out of love, okay? But don't walk, don't walk by deceit. Don't be quick to run up out of here after the Sabbath so you can go do wickedness. Okay? Read. Verse 6. Let me be weighed in an even balance. That God may know my integrity. Go ahead. If my step have turned out of the way, and my heart walked after mine eyes, and if any blot have cleaved to my hands, Read. then let me sow, and let another eat. Yea, let my offspring be rooted out. So the Lord is saying, if you're dealing with these this, this deceitful spirit, if you're dealing with that spirit of lies, lying to yourself, knowing you deal with something but you don't want to confess it, the Lord watching you. He know what you got going on. He gonna bring it to light. When He bring it to light. He said, let your offspring be rooted out. Now, I don't know about you, but I love my children. Right. You know what I'm saying? I don't want nothing to happen to my kids because of some evil that I've done. You know what I'm saying? Like we was talking on the phone the other night. A brother brought out a scripture about, you know, the scripture say, the man cannot be put to death. A, a, a father cannot be put to death for the sins of the child. And a child can't be put to death for the sins of the father. What that means is, if a father commit adultery at that time when they were stoning people for adultery, he got put to death. He, you can't say, hey, no, my son going to take that for me. Right. God, like, no, you're going to get put to death. But in the sense of, if we in the midst of evil, right, say we out doing something we ain't gonna do, we got our baby in the car, and a drive-by shoe come through, and one of our babies get shot or something like that, whose fault is that? Ours, for the, the act. So that's why he said, let my let my offspring be rooted out. We gotta be mindful. When we when we commit certain sins, it affects many people, like adultery. Right. Adultery destroys a family. Do y'all realize that? Two families. Two families, right? Especially if they both married. But say, say a brother's not married, and he sleeps with another man's wife. According to the scripture, that man can't go back to his wife. Right. So now they got a divorce. You understand? So now his kids don't have his mother and his father together. It's just a whole bunch of mess. All because you couldn't keep it strapped. You couldn't keep you couldn't keep it in your pants. You know what I'm saying? You want to lay with your neighbor's wife. That destroys a household. Now a wife is without a husband because she went out to hug us. Alright? So we gotta be mindful of the things we're doing. God watching us. He got his eye on us. Give me that Job 1 and 6 real quick. Book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. So I just want to remind y'all, God is watching. This is not the lesson. This is just a, a, just a prequel. Right. It's a prequel to the lesson. Just to remind you, God watching you. You're in the midst of some type of sin. You need to confess it so we can help you. But if you get too far and you commit the act, and it's something that's worthy of being put out the body, you get put out. Ain't nothing we can do. It's above me now. <laughs> Job 1 and 6. The book of Job, chapter 1 and verse 6. Go ahead. Now there was a day. When the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So, who are the sons of God, brothers? Huh? In this context, who are the sons of God? The angels. In this context, the sons of God are the angels, right? So he said the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. What do you think they came to present themselves before the Lord because of? What, what were they doing? Stand up, bro. They came to present themselves before the Lord because he had sent them out to do different things, so they came back to give that account of what they had been doing. Okay, I'll show you. Uh, go to Genesis 28 and 12. I'll show you what the angels be doing when they be, when they be coming to present themselves before God. The book of Genesis chapter 28 and verse 12. Go ahead. And he dreamed, and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. So this was our forefather Jacob. He was having a vision. So he dreamed, 
and behold, a ladder set up on the earth. Read. And the top of it reached to heaven. And the top of the ladder reached to the heavens. Right, come on. And behold, the angels of God are ascending and descending on it. You see that? And the angels of God going up and down, up and down, up and down. What do you think they were doing? Coming to the earth, going back to heaven. Coming to the earth, going back to heaven. What do you think they're doing? Brother Jeremiah. Uh-oh. That brother in the spirit of the Lord. That's your son? That brother on point right there. You hey, all pray. Brother be teaching. That's good. That's that's that exactly right, Jeremiah. They report back to God the evil that you're doing on earth. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. Right? Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. So they going back and forth from the earth to the heavens. Earth to the heavens. Earth to the heavens. All right? And they report something. Uh, that's it. Ecclesiastes 12 and 13. Read that. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. So I want to also bring out the point. That's how... The Lord knows your steps. That's how you've been counting your steps because he got an angel with you at all times. He's been watching your steps. He's been calculating. Everything that you do is calculated. It's watched. Okay, go ahead. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Read. For God shall bring every work into judgment. God will bring every work into judgment. Everything that you're doing behind closed doors that you think no one sees, God is going to bring that into judgment. Go ahead. With every secret thing. And every secret thing. You think God got time to sit there and watch you? I mean, he could do it if he wanted to. Right. He could watch every single one of us individually if he wanted to. He got that type of power, but he uses angels to do that. So you got an angel with you at all times watching every single thing that you're doing. Whether it be good or whether it be evil. I would, <laughs> uh, I'm going to say it, but I'm going to have to count up. Grown, grown folks do things that they're not supposed to be doing. Right? And sometimes kids do things that they're not supposed to be doing for you kids. That's watching stuff online that you ain't supposed to be watching. And I remember uh, I seen a meme one time of a dude. He was like, when you watching something that you ain't supposed to be watching, are you doing something you ain't got no beat? You doing something nasty? And you feel like you feel like your grandmama didn't watching you? I can't have my grandma watching me right now. That's the angels watching you. That eerie spirit, that eerie feeling like, I know I ain't alone right now. You not alone. See, come, see keep seeing stuff move out the corner of your eye. Oh, damn. <laughs> I know I ain't got no business doing this. I'm gonna go and finish, but I don't feel right. Grandma, that you? Granddad, that you? <laughs> Read again, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment. Read. With every secret thing. With every secret thing. Read. Whether it be good. Whether it be something good. Or whether it be evil. Whether it be something evil. Now get Matthew 18 and 10. So the angels are watching. They come in, they come in to and fro. That's remember Satan said that too. We're coming to and fro on the earth and coming up and down in it. Right. They use that portal from the heavens. What we read in Genesis 28 was a portal from the earth to heaven. You understand that? And that's what, what's the movie? Stargate. Stargate. If you ever seen the movie Stargate, remember it was a portal they used right. to get from earth to another realm or another galaxy. The angels use a portal to get from earth back to heaven. And everything they see on earth, they write it down and they take it to the Father. And report it. That's why you know how y'all be. You know how things be going smooth in your life. Like everything be kind of be smooth. Ain't really no trials. I'm chilling. Hey, hey, yeah, hey, pull up. Yeah, we chilling. Yeah, hey, turned up. Then all of a sudden, wow! Them saint, them, 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 them trials just come and just smack you upside your head. And you're like, where this come from, Lord? Why? It's because your report finally came across the Lord's desk. Your your report came across his desk. He said, "Get a light down there doing what?" Man, send that such and such. Send this spirit. Send that demon. Send this. Send that down there. Disrupt his life. Mess his paycheck up. Uh, have him lose his job. The Lord, dude, I ain't going to kill him this time. Right. I'm not going to kill him this time. I'm going to give him that STD that he can get rid of, he can get a shot for. Right. I ain't going to give him the big dog. I ain't going to give him the big dog this time. You understand that? That's the God we pay. I'm telling you, we think we playing around. We're not playing. That's the God we serve. Go ahead, I'm... And sometimes, like uh, dealing with Job's situation, Job was keeping God's law, statutes, and commandments to the best of his abilities. Um, but uh, the most high said, have you tried my servant Job? So sometimes you can be walking your walk the way you're supposed to be walking it, and then you come across the most high's radar, the devil's radar, and um, you got a trial coming. Boom, right. you got one coming, because the most high said, have you tried my servant such and such? Right. He or she is upright, keeping my laws. And then there you go, boom, trial, trial. 
Right. So yeah, like, I'm glad you could mention that because we've been mentioning that on a lot of classes right. lately. Just because you get tried don't mean you're in sin. So don't think just, oh, I'm going through this because I'm in sin. Right. That don't mean that. Sometimes you get tried just because you're a commandment keeper. Right. I, I did a class the other day called uh, Suffering as a True Christian. Us as true Christians, we suffer. And we understand why. Because we don't think it's strange to fire a trial as the trials as though some strange thing happened. It happens because we commandment keepers. But sometimes we go through it because we break God's laws. And the angels have reported that. Get that in Matthew 18 and 10. The book of Matthew, chapter 18 and verse 10. Go ahead. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones. Go ahead. For I say unto you, that in heaven their angels do always behold the face of my Father which is in heaven. So in heaven, the angels always report to the Father. They're always coming towards, coming to his face, right? To report to him what you and I are doing on the earth in the dark where nobody sees at all times. Y'all understand? Tobit 12 and um, we'll give you Revelation 8 and 4. Then give me to Tobit 12, 15. Revelation chapter 8, verse 4. Matter of fact, give me Acts 10 and 3. Sorry. We're going to move into the lesson here in just a second. I just wanted to get this out. Because I know some of you brothers and sisters in here are going through some things or have done some things that you have not revealed and don't think you're going to get away with it. It's best to confess it so that you can be uh, healed. As long as you hold it in, you won't be healed. God gonna judge you in the matter in front of everybody. Then you're gonna be ashamed. Uh, Acts chapter ten verse three. The book of Acts chapter ten and verse three. Come on. He saw in a vision, in evidently, about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he he was afraid and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him. Thy prayers and thine alms are come up for a memorial before God. So the angel told Cornelius, your prayers and your alms, the things that you're doing, the things that you're praying for, they're coming up before God. Give me Revelation 8 and 4 now. Revelation chapter 8 verse 4. Let's read that. Watch this. The book of Revelation chapter 8 and verse 4. Come on. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God. Out of the angel's hand. You see that? Read that again so you can understand that. Read it again. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. Prayers of the saints. Who are the saints, brothers? We are. We are. What, what scripture? Who knows? Somebody raise their hand. 48 verse 14. Right. That's the saints of the Most High. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, Revelation 8 and 4. And the smoke of the incense, which came with the prayers of the saints. Ascend it up before God out of the angel's hand. So the angels were doing what? Presenting the prayers of the saints to the Lord. So that's proof that when they when they document everything they're going down, they go in and report it to the Lord. You understand that? That's what uh that's why the angel said unto Cornelius, Your your prayers and arms have come up, come up as a memorial before God. Go ahead. Hey, uh, I just want I got one scripture I want to bring out dealing with the same thing about uh, the Most High is watching. He used his angels to watch. Go to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27, start at verse uh, 41. This is when Esau and Jacob um, both getting their blessings. And Esau was upset with Jacob. Read that. Genesis chapter 27 and verse 41. Uh-huh. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherewith his father blessed him. Uh -huh. And Esau said in his heart. Hold up. Esau said something in his heart. What did he say in his heart? The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. Read. And these words of Esau, were, her elder son, were told to Rebekah. Now how did Rebekah find out about him if Esau had said it in his heart? I, it was just it was kind of just I wasn't asking the question, son. I was just kind of redundant thing. All praise. So we see that the Most High is using His angels to get these messages across. Y'all got that? All praise. Yeah. So the Lord our God ain't nothing to play with. Okay, God ain't nothing to play with. So you dealing with something, bring it forth. Uh, if you've done something, bring it forth, so that uh, you can be healed. So we can pray for you. So we can find out what we need to do to help help you. Whatever you're dealing with, because we are here to help. This is a doctor's office, right? Everybody see, okay? Now let's get to the lesson. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. 
Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.